don't have your own data highlighted all copy and paste that into cell A1 and uh, now we need to split the data into time and displacement so I'm going to do that in cell B1 split all caps we're going to split A1 we're going to split it by the comma Let's check to make sure it worked it did so control copy and then paste it to the whole column. Once you do that, you need to graph the entire column. So click B and then hit Control and C. And now you can highlight B and C columns all together. Insert a chart. Uh, click Scatter always in here. And there is our three J's. Now, there's no points associated with this graph, but it makes it much easier to find your times. So if you're going to make this its own chart, move to own sheet. And now we can't lose it, it's chart one. Um, if when you click on your data, nothing um, is being shown, you need to click the eyeball button. Then you can get the times and the displacements at all points. So we're going to start our experiment at 1.57 uh, seconds. And so we need to find out what row that happened on. So we're going to go find 1.57 seconds in the data. Here it is on row 112. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually start our experiment here. So we want to make it uh, a time 0 here, not time 1.57, because we'd like to start all of our experiments from time 0. To do that, we're going to write a formula in here where we're going to take uh, B112 and we're going to subtract the time that was in that cell, which was 1.57 seconds. It's going to give us a zero. And then we're going to copy, paste that down about 25 lines. We won't need more than 25 data points because our event was only about 25 data points long. So here's our times. We start at zero and go to 0 0.32 seconds now. And we need to, in E1, put the displacements that go with those times that was C112 um, but uh, it's the displacements are positive and they're actually negative because they're going downward so we need to divide by a negative and they're in centimeters so they need to be converted to meters by dividing by 100 so we can take care of that in one shot so let's copy and paste that down about 25 lines and then we need to go find out when our second event happened so it looks like it happened at 4.77 seconds. So we'll go find out when 4.7 seconds happened and what row that's on. So 4.77 seconds started at 340. So that's where we're going to chart our next displacement. It's going to equal C340. Uh, same thing, we're going to divide by negative 100 to change the direction and to convert it to meters. Uh, so we need to copy and paste that down. And uh, for our third event, we need to start it with, it would be better if we find a time that's in five centimeters. Let's see if we can find that. 7.73. So 7.73, let's go find out what row 7.73 happened on. happened on row 546. So we're going to use that for our next displacement. Equals C uh, 546 divided by negative 100. So we uh, copy and paste that. Okay. So now it's time to create our individual charts. Let's say we do book one. We need to highlight D, which is the times, and E, which is the displacements for book one. That's just the easiest one to chart, probably. So just select all of that. Insert a chart. I wonder if I'll be able to hear the cricket in there. And there we go insert it, save it as its own 
sheet, move to own sheet, and there we go. Now, so book one is chart two. Uh, notice that we have this point that's off our graph. Uh, to fix our graph, all we have to do is delete that last point, and it'll fix itself in chart two. So there you go. Uh, let's take care of book two, which is going to be these times, but these displacements. So we're going to need to highlight column D and uh, hit control and click column F. It's got to be at the top of it. And now we will have highlighted all of D and F. And so we can chart that, which is book two. Scatter. There we go. Uh, save it as its own sheet. Move to own sheet. <clears throat> and we can see here we have these two points at the end that need to go. So we go and um, get rid of those last two points here. Looks like this one and this one. And so that should have cleaned our chart up. Yep, there we go. And then for book three, we need to highlight the times in D, but the displacements in G. So we need to click Control, click G, and now we have D and G. And by the way, it is important that you highlight D first and then G second, otherwise it'll graph uh, kind of the inverse of the function. So we don't want displacement versus time, we want time versus displacement. So make sure you highlight your times first. Insert, chart, scatter, oh, I mean chart type, scatter. And there's that chart. Insert it, move to own sheet, and we can't lose it. Okay, so in recap, chart one is just to help us find out where our events happen. Chart 2 is book 1, chart 3 is book 2, chart 4 is book 3, and now to get our comparison graph, which was all three events on one chart, it's actually really simple now. We're just going to highlight from D1 all the way to the end of our data, and insert a chart, and it'll do it for us. So once we've got all four laid out like this, it's actually not too bad to get the, the comparison chart. So there it is. Move to own sheet. Okay. <clears throat> so what I need you guys to do is title every one of them. Uh, this is going to be the comparison data. Uh, the other ones are book one, book two, book three. Make sure you title your left vertical axis as your displacement in meters, and your horizontal axis is your time in seconds. Uh, for the individual runs, I would like you guys to display equation with your R squared uh, for book one, book two, and book three. But for the comparison one, please just show the equations. Don't include the R squared. It'll get very uh, cluttered over here. All right. Thank you.